<laughs> Most definitely. You uh, you mentioned um having an internship at WSGA. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, just talk about like you know um being behind the scenes in production. Um, what what kind of led into that? And um, you know, like for the people that don't know, like let them know a little bit about you know uh being a little bit in the film production and you know lighting and sound and stuff like that. Well, yeah, coming out of um, Fort Valley State, I was, I was in my second year when I got an internship. I was in, well, no, no, no. I was a freshman. I was a freshman. Um, I was the only freshman that year that got a, an intern. Dr. Okehi, he was a Ghanaian professor. I did just, used to always go by his office only because he, he would always tell us, my door is open. You young people, come to me if you need advice, if you got a question, I don't care what it is about a class, a grade, or life. My door is open, just come by, even if it's just to say hello. So I, I took him up on it. You know, I appreciated it when he said that. And so over time, I realized he really appreciated when I would just come by and say, hey, Dr. Okay, he, how are you? Sit down in his office, and I would just talk about whatever was going on what I thought, what I thought about being a student at a historically black college, you know, which in this time shows like different world was, was on the air. So it was really like that, going to a black college. It was a proud, high esteem situation. You know, it was cool to be articulate. It was cool to be smart. And it was cool to, to be, you know, who we were. And it was also an international school. Um, we had students from all over the world too. But the last time I went by his office, he said, would you like to do an intern? Now I'm 19 years old. I said, well, what is an intern? He said, well, that's where you go and you don't get paid and you study in your field. You go to an actual job. And that sounded really interesting. He said, channel 24, WGXA in Macon, you're gonna go twice a week. And you're gonna go with a junior. Her name is Angela McKinney and so, we started maybe during the spring quarter, we'd come up and, and sit in the newsroom, sit in the control room, and just do what you do with an intern, watching the newscast, actually learning to write stories. I wrote a story about when Coca-Cola started Cherry Coke. And the, the big controversy was, well, they're gonna get rid of classic Coke for this Cherry Coke, and that was the story I wrote. And just learning how broadcast works. Fast forward to graduating with a marketing degree, there was really nothing happening with marketing. I actually fell back on my intern because they, they already knew me. So I said, well, let me just go and, and talk to them. And they hired me on my birthday. Channel 24, 24 years old on my birthday, April 24th. And that led to um, a steady career. Um, learning what they call master control, running shows, running commercials, timing out, to going right into live news graphics. So now we're doing newscasts, I'm doing weather graphics, I'm doing sports, deadline oriented. And it was a real drill because it got me very into deadlines and working and that spilled back onto the music, learning how sound is supposed to sound, how sound is supposed to mix, how it's supposed to hit the air. And what I noticed in these days, TV was analog. So TV was full of artists. TV was full of writers, poets, rappers. All the reporters were aspiring actresses. And so I realized we're all artists and we are in this industry because it gives you time to think. Until time to get that show in there, everything is about that show. You're getting paid for eight hours, but we only worked about three or four hours. Maybe, maybe less, but it was a very intense very intense two or three hours getting the deadline. You got the people bringing the scripts, they go out, they shoot. Now we got to take this and make it hit the air right. Time it out, execute it, make sure the video's in place, make sure the mic's in place. And that was a good drill, even for just discipline, uh, learning how to work with people under pressure. But being an artist, it also prepares you for 
the go moment when it's time to execute you just stay focused on execution you know and um yeah tv was good it was uh how i sort of ended up in making working in live tv and uh tv in those days was very different from the internet day because those guys were only competing against the other TV station. Now, a TV station is competing against a whole world of internet. The news can hit, you know, very quick. And so I saw, towards the end of those years, things like Facebook and YouTube were seen as toys. Not to be taken seriously, go to something to be taken very seriously. Because not everybody's eyes are on those mediums. The advertisers are going there because they're chasing the eyes. Then the money is going. So a, an agency or, or, or an organization like a TV or radio being very dependent on advertising for its life support is going to pay very serious attention to where is everybody's eyes. Fukushima quake hits Japan. Facebook breaks the story before our newsroom. That was the first in history that happened. So within a month, you know, there's a web team and the whole chemistry of TV starts to change. Newspaper was taken out pretty much. You don't see nobody reading newspaper. You see people with laptops. Um, radio was knocked down a little bit, you know, and we were knocked down a little bit. They said, no, 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 we got to adapt. We got to literally become the internet. So those free hours that we had were filled with streaming and, you know, getting digital content on as well as your live content. So Still, you know, it was fun watching that evolution, but that was around the time I was transitioning out, becoming more independent with music, you know, stepping out, saying, you know, I'm not going to work for nobody for a while. Just step out and play music, you know. You know, good thing. 